Hi everybody, this is Oksana and today we're going to make this adorable little pendant that's made with a copper washer and it has this little dangly kind of charm inside of it and this is a really great project because it's quite simple and it's good for beginners and involves some wire and some wire wrapping but a little bit and then we just have this washer so you just have to get yourself a copper washer which a lot of times they're used for cars so you can find it in um, shops that have things for cars or you can just find it online which is what I did I just bought it on eBay so before we get started I just want to quickly say that I hope if you're not already subscribed you'll consider subscribing to my channel and liking my video if you like it of course that'll really help me out and if you want to be notified when I post new videos, which is every weekend, just hit that notification bell. So let's go ahead and get started making this pendant. So the copper washers that I got, they look like this. And I got this from eBay. And there's an assortment of different sizes. In this video, I'm going to be using this one, which is 18 millimeters tall, but you can experiment and do this with different sizes. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna hammer the washer for texture, and this is optional. If you like the look of the texture, you can do it. If you don't like it and you like it just plain how it is, you can leave it how it is. But basically you need an iron block to hammer on and you need a chasing hammer. So this is my chasing hammer. I got it many, many years ago on eBay. It has a flat side for hammering things flat to make them stronger, and then it has this little um, domed side for the texture. So all you have to do is just use this domed side on the copper washer. Of course, just place it down on the ground. Don't hold it in the air like I am. And you're just gonna hit it. And you can see right away the texture that is forming so you're just gonna do that all around so here's what it looks like when I finished you can see all that beautiful texture and if you oxidize the copper that makes the texture come out even more next we're gonna need some round wire and this is 18 gauge dead soft copper wire. It's round wire and it's from um, RioGrande.com. That's what it looks like. So 18 gauge is a little sturdier. I use 20 gauge a lot and you're gonna see me using that later in this video. But for this portion, I think the 18 gauge works better just because um, we're gonna make our bale and we want it to be sturdy. So I just cut myself three inches here something like just a little piece will be adequate and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make our bale so you just want to make sure that the wire that you're starting with has a flush cut here at the top so these are my wire cutters and the part of the wire that was on this side has a nice flat edge and the one on this side gets kind of like pinched and so if you don't, like this is the side that has the little pinched end. Maybe you can see that. And this side actually does have a nice flat end, but if it didn't, you would just take it, you would put this flat side of your wire cutters this way, and you would just cut off the tip of your wire to do, give yourself this nice flat edge. And now I'm using these bail making pliers to make a nice round little circle here for our bale. So I'm gonna use this one here, which is the fourth size. You want it to be not too tiny because the washer has to fit through it. So I'm just making a loop, bringing that all the way around until I have made a complete loop like this. Okay, and now we just want to make a super tiny little loop. So tiny that I'm not even going to bother with these and I'm just going to use my normal round nose pliers. But first I'm going to cut myself a little end. So again, this flat side facing up so that we get a nice flat cut here. 
and we have some extra wire so our wire could have been a little shorter so I'll measure this little end for you I usually just eyeball it so it is about seven millimeters and now I'm just gonna grab it with my round nose pliers and I'm just gonna make a very small oops a very small little loop here like this using my round nose pliers here and all the wire ends this one is not quite touching so we can just bring it a little closer but this is the shape that you should have now just like this and what you want to do is you want to hammer it but this time we're hammering with the flat side of our chasing hammer because that is just going to make it stronger and less likely to come open when you're wearing it. We don't need to put texture on this. I mean, you can if you want to. You won't really see it too much because it's a bale, so it's going to be hanging like this, so you won't see the texture, but just hammer it for strength. So after I've hammered it, here's what it looks like. Sometimes it makes the little loops come open, and so you just want to use your pliers and you want to close them back up like that and like this so here's what that looks like and now we're going to use some 20 gauge round copper wire so it's very similar to the other wire we use but it's just a little bit thinner because it's 20 gauge instead of 18 and you just need a little piece and the reason you need this, I'll measure it in one second here, is that we're going to make a little charm that is going to dangle inside of the copper washer. So this is two inches. And you don't have to make this. This doesn't have to be the thing that dangles inside of your copper washer. It can be anything you want. You can make a little swirly out of wire. You can do just a bead. There's so many different possibilities, but I just wanted to show you something that would be simple, but not, you know, too simple. So it's like, I think it ends up being really pretty. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here, not quite halfway, and we are going to put a bend like this. And now we're going to slide on some beads. So what I have is I have a two millimeter tiny tiny little copper bead here and these little beads are from Rio Grande also I'm um, usually seed beads some of them will have an opening large enough to fit on 20 gauge wire now I found this little crystal bead little faceted bead that I'm gonna add you can't see the whole of it Oh my goodness, this is a struggle. There we go, I was worried it wasn't gonna fit or something, but it fits, all good. And I'm gonna finish it off with another little copper bead. You can do any combination of beads that you like, whatever beads that you have on hand. You can make a nice little arrangement, see which ones fit on your wire. So now what we're going to do is here on this other end, we are going to bend that up. So this is what we have. And we're just going to push on these. Makes like a little triangle. And just trying to get it to look kind of even because there's a little bit of a sharper bend on one end of this. Okay, so you just want it to be kind of small because if you take your copper washer and you consider that this is going to dangle inside here and there's going to be a little loop up here to hold it, you want it to be like this is a good size. You don't want it to be too much bigger. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to hold it and this wire that's on top here, whatever wire is on top, we're going to bend it to the back like this. 
And here on the back, we are just gonna take our pliers and we're gonna trim it, but we're gonna leave just a little end so that we can press down on that little end and it basically is just gonna close up. It's like a little loop and it's closing up the loop so that everything is attached just like that. So this will be the front of our little dangle. So what we wanna do now is grab our round nose pliers and we're gonna hold this other wire here and we are gonna wrap the wire around like this so that it forms a little loop and then right where that loop meets the wire, the other wire, we are gonna cut it and now we're just gonna use our regular pliers to just, it needs to be pushed back a little bit because it was going forward and I want to just line it up with this wire. So I just pushed it back and now I'm just pushing this way to just get a nice flush kind of connection there. So here's what it looks like, like a little charm and it has a nice little loop on top for easy attachment. I'm just going to press over this loop with my pliers and that kind of flattens and strengthens it a little bit since it would be too difficult to hammer this. All right, so now it's all good. And now we take our little bale that we made and first we're gonna open up this tiny loop like this. So we're gonna take our little charm we're gonna have the front of it face us and we're gonna put it through here. Ooh, I didn't open that wide enough. All right, let's try that again. We are gonna have it face us and we're gonna put it through like this. So if it's facing us, this is on the back. And now we just close it back up, this little part that we opened. Close it back up like this, and there we go. And now we're gonna open this side here, and we're gonna take our washer, and we're gonna have the textured side face us. Again, didn't open it wide enough. <laughs> and then we're gonna put the washer through just like this, and we are gonna close up that little loop so that it's nice and flush like this. So you put a necklace through the bale, or if this is earrings, if you want to make two of them, you would attach a little earring hook. And now it's not gonna like fall down and move around like that because just the gravity is gonna have the washer hanging down and it's gonna have this little dangle, dangle inside of it. And one really fun, cool thing about this pendant is if you wanted to wear it in a different way, so we're just going to remove our cord necklace and we're going to let this fall down and then we're going to take our cord necklace, fold it in half, and we're going to make a lark knot by, through this little loop, pulling the other ends of our cord necklace like this. So once you've made your little lark knot, that's how you attach and it hangs like this. Just another way to wear it. And then if you wanted to get it back to the other way that it was, all you do is you just take your cord necklace. Sorry, my little clasp broke off of it, but I just use this to demonstrate with. So you just put it through right here, the little bale, and you just let it fall. And then I'm just gonna flip it because that's the back and this is the textured side. And there we have it. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.